So I guess we'll start out with <clears throat> an introduction. Joe Loudermilk, developer of World Pops. Hopefully it'll be a big old channel one day. But we have uh, taken on some different projects around here and uh, trying to have a little bit of fun last weekend at Indian Mountain. We, uh, we broke the drive shaft at the Coliseum. And I told myself, well, I ain't going to fix it. I'm going to get somebody else to do it. Well, I came to my senses and says, you know what? Nobody on YouTube has the 2022 uh, Pro XP four-seater uh, drive shaft chain. So I figured, hey, I've learned enough off YouTube. I might as well uh, show some people how I did it. So here we go. Like I said, 2022 model XP Pro or Pro XP uh, front universal joint is what's broken. And we are uh, getting ready to figure out how to uh, get this thing out of here. So first thing, we're going to start with the belt cover and uh, get that out of the way. And uh, shortly after that, we'll go to the inside. The front's already disconnected, so not a big deal there. And we're going to see if we can't flanangle this thing out of here. So, that is that. We're going to get started. First things first, we will look right down here. And we see the cover. And that is what has to come off first. So we're going to start with the old uh, screwdriver. Try and get this uh, tube off. It always comes undone real easy. But it never goes on real easy. If somebody's got a secret to that, um, let me know. Because I always just use a jack and uh, push it up on there. But Part one, off. Oh. Secondly, we are going to, uh, secondly, we are going to uh, get this cover off real quick. And uh, hopefully there ain't a big mess inside of there. Uh, it's pretty much got a new belt. And the uh, rest of it should come off pretty easily. So that was actually the first time that I've had this cover off since the new springs was put on. And uh, it does have an aftermarket clutch and a couple other things. So I guess that's why it was a little difficult to get off. But there she is. She's off. Inside looks pretty good. I don't see any frays in the belt. Maybe just clean her up a little bit and uh, she'll be ready to go. So. That is that. So we're going to start by taking out all the seats. Try and get this interior taken apart. All right, now we got a little light on this subject. We are attempting to get all the way down there, wherever that is. So first things first, we're gonna see if we can't get the uh, rear tunnel out. 
You might have to figure out how to get that done. Shouldn't be too terribly difficult. A couple of screws. Um, be honest with you, I can't even see where I'm trying to get to. But it's got to be close. Huh. I don't see no drive shaft yet. So we're going to take another pause and we'll be back shortly. so we're still at it but we've made a little bit of progress we are uh trying to get that light out of y'all's eyes we've got the uh, interior torn apart i say torn taken apart and we're just going to give you a little overview and see what we got to do next so as you can see the tunnel is out there's still a lot of stuff in there that's in the way so Looking around over this way. <clears throat> Down there, you can actually see the drive shaft, but there ain't no getting to it. But there's evidently a drive shaft loop up in there that has to be undone. And down here, we have a carrier bearing. And then back here, we have another carrier bearing. So, next stop is going to be to. Uh, get underneath this thing and take the uh, belly pan off. I do have an aftermarket uh, belly pan, so it shouldn't be too terribly hard, but we're going to uh, come back whenever that thing is off and we'll see what we can see at that point. Well, we're back. We've learned a whole heck of a lot. It's not the same day of filming that we started tearing things apart, but just as a re recap, nobody on YouTube has done a 2022 Razor Pro X4 uh, XP4 drive shaft switch swap. So we started out with the advice that we was given. Everybody said, take all the interior out, take the tunnel out. Uh, you should be able to get it out the rear end of the, uh, of the buggy not true but we did tear everything out of the middle and inside and if we could move it we moved it but now we do officially have the drive shaft out we're about to change all the universal joints and bearings while we're in there um, I got everything indexed I got everything numbered and now it's just a little bit of work to do but I wanted to give you guys an update. So, what it boils down to, as I'm knocking pieces everywhere, as you can see, it is completely open. It is, uh, it's pretty cool to see everything that's in there, how they did it. And, you know, it's been a big learning experience for me. Uh, hopefully you guys will get a little bit of something out of this too, but um, the drive shaft on the 2022 Pro XP4 comes out the bottom. Uh, skid plate comes off. There's two cross members that uh, you attach the, uh, the bearings to. You can get to those pretty easily. Um, but then there's also two more cross members that are welded in that don't move. And that's the tricky part, trying to figure out which way 
which of the three drive shafts go uh, to get around those other cross members. But it is out. We got some more work to do. We're gonna change these things out and try to get this thing back in. But the one thing I wanted to show you was, so the one thing I wanna show y'all is when you do have all the interior taken out, like so, it is the perfect opportunity to make a couple of upgrades. So, don't tell the wife, but I did go and order some more things that are gonna go in here, and just to give you an idea of what it is, and we'll do a video and kind of show you um, how these installs go. Um, but let's just start with probably my favorite purchase so far. Yes, the Viper shifter. It is, uh, it's made to where you don't go into a uh, park and high as easily. You move the shifter over and you got just bang it in reverse, bang it into uh, low. And uh, I ain't even got the camera because I'm li busy looking at it. It's hot. They did a good job building this thing. It's all billet aluminum, shines, um, comes in three pieces. Of course, that's where your hand gonna rest a good little bit. And uh, it does have a boot on the bottom to uh, to catch all the dirt that comes in the buggy. So that ought to be a fun little thing to try and figure out best way to keep clean. If there's a such thing as keeping clean. But that's gonna go in. Um, what else? Oh, while it's out, we went ahead and got the M1 uh, GMRS in cab um, walkie talkie radio and we're going to mount it uh, on the inside of the console but we also got that sucker and it's going to have its own little bracketry system that uh, holds it into the console so that'll be pretty cool too and uh, we did get the in cab speaker so you can hear what's going on uh, with your partners because you know you can't go by yourself you got to have all your partners and if they in their own buggy you can't talk to them and me personally as an old man i can't hear them so we went ahead and amplified them a little bit too but we're gonna um, get started with uh, changing these universal joints we got the shop area set up in here and we'll bring the camera around and do a little uh oh yeah there's something else i got right here we went ahead and got the tusk brand um universal joint removal tool u joint sorry i always say universal but i guess it is a u because everybody shortens everything so um we're going to continue working and see if we can't get this thing back together and uh, ready for Indian Mountain in a couple of weeks. And we'll do some more filming when we get back underneath there to put that drive shaft back in. All right, see y'all in a little bit. So we're going to start out with the littlest part first and see if we can't get this thing figured out. But this thing has a uh, little C-clip that goes around the cap. That's what holds it in. That's what we're gonna take out first. And then we're gonna press that cap out, see what we can do with it. And yes, I am partially blind, so I am wearing my old man gloves. Just like so. There it went. So that comes out first, and then we are going to try this new tool that we got, see how good it works. So evidently you want the, the cap 
to have a bottom so that gives it somewhere to press into but I really don't think we're going to need that right now I think we just go ahead and start with the big one which is there 22 millimeter what is this one 27 millimeter so this ain't the big one just the middle one big one goes in like so piece comes in like so and they say in all the videos that I watched that this center bolt needs to be greased well in order to uh, help uh, the, the threads as it goes in and out not to uh, bog down but then you're going to have to have the, the center punch also which is going to be smaller than the head of the thing and it goes on like so I guess we went in too far first so So, and then we're going to tension that up a little bit. So loose. Yeah. So in the pack with the new universal joint, you get a universal joint that is threaded so that you can put your grease ports in, which will uh, extend the life of these things. It comes with brand new C-clips and the pin that goes in the front yoke to attach it to the, uh, to the front differential. So that's a good piece. We're keeping that one. And I think we will use a 45 inside of here. We'll get that thing threaded on here in a second. And we'll start putting this thing back in. So here we are. I'm going to put some glasses on so I can see better. And we're going to not over torque it, but we're going to get it somewhat tight. And we're going to leave it on a 45 degree angle so that it's accessible with a, well, we're gonna get it a little tighter, I guess. We're gonna leave it right there on that 45 so you can get your Zerk fitting down in there and uh, keep these things greased good.
<clears throat> Another update. Fourth change of clothes means I'm on the fourth day. There have been some findings in the process of redoing the uh, universal joints. We did uh, find out that the front yoke and the first drive shaft uh, was bent. Um, it would not accept the end caps of the universal joints to go in with the bend that is on that thing. So we, uh, we are waiting on parts for that. In the process of doing some other stuff, I told y'all we would uh, put the shifter in, maybe on another video. Well, the shifter is in. Uh, easiest thing I've ever done. Viper did a great job. Uh, everything functions properly. Um, one clip, one nut, take the cable off, take the bushings out, put that one in place with the original equipment that was uh, for the original shifter and uh, and it goes in it took less than 10 minutes to actually do but it looks pretty good we will uh, pull that down and uh, we'll go see it but it is in hmm I guess we need some light on the subject so it's in uh, functions properly I ain't gonna change the uh, shifter too much because the console ain't about all the way back in but it is uh, it's a pretty slick deal I enjoyed uh, doing that 10 minutes worth of work although this drive shaft I ain't liking that one too much um, that's it for about now we, uh, Gonna get the radio installed, get the speaker in, and uh, when parts finally get here, we'll get them back in, and uh, them drive shafts, that is, we'll get them back in, and uh, that's gonna be all she wrote. YouTube peoples, parts are in. We got the new drive shaft, finally, after a week of waiting. And after the last 45 minutes of not remembering where I put the second drive shaft, we did find it. Um, I have some help today. I want everybody to meet Finley. Finley Quinn, say hello. Where are you? I'm over here. There you are. What are we doing today? Fixing the thing. The razor. The, the buggy. I just call it a buggy because that makes it easier. <laughs> but I have been under... And uh, I told y'all I was going to tell you or show you how the drive shaft goes in on this particular buggy that I've said a million times. It's a 2022 uh, Pro XP4. Um, I did go ahead and pre-install them a little bit. Let me get y'all out of the light again. But we're going to crawl under there and I'll show you all the different obstacles that are in the way. All right. Be right back. Watch out, babe. Here we go. Oh! He's trying to get under there. He's trying to get under there. It's a long way from where I come from. <laughs> no. All right. So as you can see, the drive shafts are in, but your front drive shaft, if you can see it, there you go. Front drive shaft, it basically slips right in. Second drive shaft. Wow. Carrier bearing to universal joint. It has to come in under this support that doesn't necessarily move or get out of the way. And then you've got a second one of those here. And yeah, they are in the way. Especially with the uh, plastic the tunnel one over there. that is in there. The but one there. they're in. We're going to get them bolted in and uh, see how hard it is to get the third one connected. But there you got it. This thing's about to be running pretty soon. Alright. I have no knuckles left. 
but that's okay. Because that dry shaft is in. It about whooped my butt, but we got it. Couple of things. If the back one is in place, the middle drive shaft will not go in. If the front one is in place, the middle drive shaft will not go in. Trick. Don't connect them, but get the middle in as far as you can. Get the rear in and sit onto the spline of the transmission. Then already have the front one in but off to the side and up as far as it'll go once the middle one is in connect the rear remember the splines only go one way so i hope you indexed your drive shaft if not you just got to feel every spot that it could possibly go in so rear on the middle's already in place or close to movable from the front to the rear connect the rear bring the front all the way back to the middle and that's going to give you about this much room with everything moved all the way to the back to get the front on uh, the pin that holds the front universal joint or holds the front yoke onto the differential uh, I wound up having to make tools to get the new pin in there it did not want to go but it's in uh, grease it. Grease is your friend. And let me just say this. When you're trying to get the middle drive shaft in, that inner plastic uh, that runs across the top of the drive shaft, don't be afraid to cut it. There's no purpose for it. There's no structure to it. Um, get it out of your way or your hands will look like mine. That is for sure. Um, but short of getting a, a belly pan back on, this drive shaft job is done. So hopefully this was good information for you guys. Um, I know that <laughs> I'm glad I didn't video me trying to get the drive shaft in there because I put it in and took it out all three pieces probably five or six times trying to find the right sequence. So. Listen to the sequence that I just told you. Um, the we'll go over it again. The rear drive shaft. It comes in through the belt. Does have to come off from the belt. And the difficult part that took me forever to figure out is that ear right here. If your drive shaft is on this side, it will not go underneath that that ear so you have to move this drive shaft all the way up to the front hold on you can't even see that right there Let's see if we can get it down in here a little better without blocking the light it's got to go all the way down there to where the drive shaft loop is and then insert it back up into here it won't go this way what else when you're doing that, the middle drive shaft has to be in place and moved all the way up as far as you can get it. And I had to cut plastic out. It came out a lot easier than it went back in. That is for sure. So now we'll go underneath. All right. So I showed y'all before. We got a cross member in the rear and a cross member in the front but you also have two permanent cross members that's part of the frame which is here and here all right again it comes out of the bottom but you got to flanangle it over these permanently placed cross members it's actually just part of the frame but the front drive shaft which is there behind the bearing carrier off of the spline as far forward as it can go. Middle drive shaft as far forward as it can go. Then bring the rear shaft in as far as it can go 
and then underneath that ear of the belt box. Get it in place. Then your first spine connection goes in. Then this spine connection goes in and that's going to leave you about an inch. Maybe two inches, but I think it was only about an inch. You know, about that far. The spline was, or the yoke was behind the spline. Then I got to put it on, moved it up, pinned it, and then just adjusted forward to get the cross member on. And there are bolts up here. And then there's bolts here and here and this one only goes on one way you can see these two ears and this one ear where's my finger one ear two ears this only goes on one way the back cross member uh it's longer on one side than it is on the other so it can only go on one way also but you drop those down you can get to the bolts that hold the carrier to the cross member and uh it goes back together the same way after you get the drive shaft in here. But all of this plastic here, I cut all plastic out from here to here. Because this is where all the flanangling was trying to go. It didn't go back in the same way I got it out. So that is uh, what it is. So there you have it. It's in. Now get the belly pan back on and we might be able to go for a ride. Thank y'all. Oh, and hit subscribe, like, put some comments in. Uh, yeah, I'm stupid for taking this thing on. But uh, I got a bunch of other cool shit instead of paying the shop to fix it. So we'll do another video of all the other stuff that we put in in just a little bit. See ya.